Welcome. This is Bronyville episode 20, recorded on, uh, let's see, August 27th, 2011. Uh, we're still ha- currently having a giggle fest right now, but uh, we'll continue doing the uh, the opening introductions with all these giggly types. Uh, I, again, am your host, uh, Apple Cider, running the boards and doing everything here in Brony Station Alpha. I uh, want to welcome, as always, my super awesome uh, co-host there, Chef Sandy. Hello. Yeah, we got a fun one today because it is uh, episode. It is one of the aughts, one of the zeros, which means it's an all email show. It's a big round number. Yeah, and it's, uh, and, it, uh, yeah. and it feels like we just got done recording a podcast. I know it's kind of weird how that works out. Yeah. Well, we wanted to make sure you know we got everything done for you since uh, supposedly uh, Chef is going to be abandoning me. Um, at some point in the near future. Oh yes, for a whole weekend. Yeah, so I'll have to. You're, you're going to burn down the restaurant, aren't you? I don't. I. You're going to try to cook, and it's going. I'm going to come home, and there will be nothing more than a pile of splinters and ash, and you sitting there with a pan in your hooves, looking sad because you tried to cook dinner. Stove's supposed to have wood in it, right? I th- I thought that's how it went. You know, I, I'm going to leave you for a weekend, and then I will come back, and everything will be ruined forever. No, I could do it. I can swear I can. I'll just, I'll hire some temp work. Which, speaking of temp work, I uh, I did hire us a, a little intern while you're gone, and we're going to test them. Uh, we're we're going to test to see how this intern is. Uh, they will be on this show, and they will be on the next show. So you know that just just to have your temporary little replacement there, chef. And uh, the, I only have the initials here of M S. So I, I hope that they I hope that they're going to be good. Um, who is it? Howdy, y'all. Well, you uh, two silly bellies, calm down. Uh, howdy. Oh God. Mr. Okay. M S. How are you? You all hurt me. You hurt me in such amazing <laughs> ways. What? Oh, shut your mouth. All right, so we've got Midnight Shadow back to obviously wreck our podcast. Yep, it's ruined everything forever. Are you there, Midnight? Are you still alive, y'all? Just about. Y'all. He broke the podcast earlier during the pre-show, just doing his... Just go ahead and get it out of the way. Do your Do your American accent. Let's hear this. <laughs> come on, come on! No show friend. Okay, no, okay. all right. Wait, 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 wait. Come on. Uh, deep breath, deep breath. Come on, come on, come on. Pro- professional game face, game face. Yes, yes. <clears throat> hula, hula. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> She's laughing in the background and is making it hard for him to do it. Um, uh, this is going to be the worst show of us ever. Um, but Midnight, you may know him. He was on the show once before. He's one of the pre-readers over there on EQD, making sure that any of the fit coming across, you know, actually has words and isn't just an incoherent, like, single big block of stupid text. It isn't the and Sweetie Belle Darrell. Yeah. We, we, we do get the occasional Sweetie Belle Darrell. But just, uh, not too many, surprisingly. Some of them actually try to be professional. Wow, amazing! So, um, what we should do is we have our usual. We've uh, we should just go ahead and double check out with you at least with the with the two big ones, um, just to see if anything has transpired or changed uh, with you. So, uh, what I forget what it was last time, and is, uh, are they still your favorite character? So, who was it, and who is it now? Oh, it's definitely a rarity. Still rarity, rarity? for life. I have the sticker, y'all. Uh, I have the sticker. What the heck kind of accent is he doing now? Ghetto British. Really bad. Uh, <laughs> ghetto British. He's doing ghetto British now. Is that, is that how British. it's called? Cool, blimey, Gavin. Uh, uh, 
Mid- midnight's off his meds. It's obvious. Um, and I guess favorite episode, still whatever it was. Um, I'm not actually sure. I, I mean, in terms of episodes that stuck with me, I would say Sonic Rainbow. Mm-hmm. But really, there's it's like I said before. I think it was easier to say what's not liked, though. Even ones I don't like are rather liked. So you you know one thing I I noticed the other day uh, we were while I was uploading some stuff for the upcoming live stream show, which I'll just uh, plug in a little bit. Uh, we noticed something very interesting. We were watching episode one. And we started noticing things that shouldn't have been there in the first episode. When Nightmare Moon appears, the Cutie Mark Crusaders are totally there in the room together, like uh, like hugging each other for support. And I was like, yeah. wait, what? You don't know each other? Cut that out. Plot hole. What do they call it? Pilot's disease or something. Yeah, it was. I was like, what? What? No, stop that. Don't don't introduce no plot holes. That not, and I'm also a little worried, Chef. I just want to bring this up. Season two is rapidly upon us, and yep. and you know we we held, we started doing this show the way that we had, so that people could you know during that during that big drought of summer that we've had that they would have some pony to to rely on. And now that pony is returning, but you think they're gonna leave us? You think they, they very well could just be like, forget these jerks. I don't want to be alone. I love you, fans. You're so nice to me. Of course not. I mean, we're going to have new content to work out, new ways to talk about the episodes. Go, oh, my God, that was the best episode ever each week. And uh, just keep talking like we're doing. Because, I mean, after all, we started the show back when the uh, show was still airing, tail end of first season. So I don't think we should have to worry about that. Yeah, I just I just don't want them to leave because you know we I like them fans so much. This show's so off the rails. You know what we should do first? I should talk about just one more time the Bernie Bill the Bronyville Happy New Season celebration that's going to happen on September 10th. Yep, of uh, 12 hours of pony goodness uh, all Squeeze. over on live stream. Um, we will we will have guests. We will have silliness. Uh, I may, in fact, have to force my girlfriend onto the show because she obviously, after two hours of previous podcasting, she just can't shut her mouth. Mm. Um, and yeah, so you know we've got we've got all this stuff going on, and uh, yeah, you know we should you should totally turn, tune in. We're going to have prizes and stuff like that all show long from noon to midnight. That is insane amount of pony. That is way more pony than I could probably handle. But we're going to try it. We're going to do it. We're going to have guests. It should be awesome as long as I can figure out how to actually do it, which I'm not sure about. But I have friends in different places. Yeah. So let me uh, let me do this. Let me uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and start. We got a ton of email here since this is the email show. And of course, you can always send those across to Bronyville at gmail dot com. Um, this is us going through the backlog and doing all the, uh, the craziness, uh, since you guys seriously overload us with emails, we want to try and get to as much of the good stuff as possible. So I will start this, uh, with, uh, foolish. Hi, foolish. I got my mom into the ponies. She being an elementary school counselor told me that she would use them as lessons for her students. I think it may be the best thing that ever happened to a school ever, and I would love to hear what you think about it. In other news, I'm an avid weapon fan and always wear my 50s Dutch Army jacket when I go out and do stuff. I recently purchased a Rainbow Dash Brony patch that I will sew on where the rank is supposed to go. Touting an AK-74, you has never been as manly as now. Much love, Foolish. Ah, uh, so thank you very much. Foolish, let's see. Uh, the best thing to happen in the school ever was using ponies in a lesson plan. I think I've, I think I've explained before. Our roommate is actually a teacher and, uh, gave away an award to one of the, uh, to one of the kids because, uh, she was just kind of going like, well, she's kind of random and kind of silly and I, I want to give awards to everybody. So what should it be? And my roommate went, she sounds a lot like Pinkie Pie. And so she created a Pinkie Pie Award and gave it to her because she was random and sometimes annoys her friends. 
I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah, you know, just a just a neat little piece there, and uh, cool on the patch. I, they used to have one of those when I one of those jackets when I was kind of a rebel. You know, I had those days way back when. Rebel back cider. In, back in the eighties, when you wore your mane that way. Yeah, hair metal band. Yep, hair metal ponies. So, uh yeah, let's do this, uh, Chef. What we got next? All right. Dear Apple Cider and Chef Sandy, I listened to your po- last podcast, and once again, I was thoroughly entertained. It is safe to say that when your last show, which was episode 10, I believe, was nearing an end, so this is apparently an older email, I gasped when you thanked T-Dude for giving you a good review on iTunes. I then proceeded to squeal like a little school filly and said in a high-pitched voice, Somebody's getting an email! So here I am, writing you both an email to show my gratitude. You're both professional and seem to have just the right formula for my entertaining and informative show. In every episode, you guys always impress. It's people like you who are the best representatives of this community. I just want to thank you for providing your epic contributions to all of Bronydom. Now, I don't know if y'all are still taking questions for your show, but I had one that's been knocking around my head like corn seeds in an empty chili can. Before really getting into the MLP fandom, I didn't have the widest variety of interest in certain shows and video games. But since reading a crossover fix such as Stable, a house crossover that I recommend, and a few Doctor Who ones, I found myself watching the non bona fide original versions of those shows. So my question is, has the fandom introduced you to anything that you didn't think you'd like or haven't been introduced to? Thanks again for the awesome show. Your semi-flamboyant, southern acid off-road vehicle driving fan, T-Dude. T-Dude. Dude, uh, I'm going to defer because I'm going to have to try and think up something uh, directly related. Um, I know one thing right offhand, but let's let's bring it to midnight. Uh, has there been anything that's been made fic wise that turned you on to the original content? That's actually a pretty good question. Um, most of these crossovers that we we get, I either do watch them or haven't, and probably won't. But it's made me interested in playing Fallout Equestria again, even though I haven't read the actual fanfic yet. Because I would, I'd like to play the game before understanding the fanfic, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. There's a, there's a lot to Fallout, a lot of like weird backstory and which side of the United States it takes, uh, or you know, I, w- I wonder. Uh, I, of course, I haven't read it, and it's uh, it's on my pile of shame that I need to need to read at some point. I wonder which side of Equestria it actually takes place on. I'm sure it just spans everywhere, just with how popular that is. Um, yeah, uh, Chef, what do you got? I have to say that I really hasn't, primarily because a lot of the fix that have been put out there are from things that I've already watched. So it's like, I've watched House, I'm a big Doctor Who fan, uh, Firefly, there's a Firefly flick that came out recently, I watched that already. Um, because I'm so rather steeped in nerd culture and television and stuff like that. Like, I've been watching Doctor Who, and Doctor Who's fix are always great. So, I mean, it's sort of like, yeah, it's good to see the stuff, the shows that I watch and enjoy um, getting ponified. Now, like, if there was, say, My Little Pony crossed with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, or My Little Pony crossed with Supernatural, I would probably give those a shot. I've not seen those shows, but I don't think I've also seen a fic featuring that. So. Yeah. Um, I have, you know, there probably would be a few things kind of uh, on those similar lines. Uh, one thing that I can think right offhand where I think somebody was like, hey, they made a pony mod for this, so you should probably check it out, was Terraria. Um, I pretty much... Bought the game, installed the Terraria Pony mod immediately, and I sincerely cannot imagine that game without ponies. It's, uh, hold on, hold on, let me turn this mic because Sleepy Pie wants to say something. Yeah, but remember before the Pony mod, you're like, Terraria, but it's just like Minecraft, why would I want to play Terraria? Moving back to me, uh, this is my rebuttal. <laughs> Don't care. Yeah, whatever. You know what? You know, yeah, okay, I'm a bandwagoner. I don't care. Watch me not give a care there, Sleepy Pie. Nee. So, uh, I mean, yeah, that that's the only thing I can really think where it's just like, hey, there's a pony mod for this. And I was like, okay, all right, I'll do it. That works for me. So. 
Mm. That's what I got. I ain't got much more. Usually when it comes to fix, I grab stuff that's related. Um, I see that uh, that that Stargate one, and I hear it's really, really good, but uh, Stargate, nah, who watches that? Oh, Stargate's good. Burn. Actually, the Stargate fic is actually really good as well. It's It's surprisingly canon. I mean... I was there when we were bouncing the ideas around, and like um, the glowing eyes that Nightmare Moon has, that's obviously a Goa'uld. Come on. Mm-hmm. It's so obvious. There's, I mean, there's, there's so much that fits with that, and when they find the Stargate control, the uh, dial-home device itself, it's covered in, in cutie muck buttons instead of the normal seagulls. So it's great. Hmm, interesting. Um, yeah, I, I just, I just have an irrational just poke at the, uh, at the Stargate fans, including, uh, Sleepy Pie, who is totally one, but will not read that story because she's like, eh, double crossover. I won't doubly read that one. Eh. <laughs> All right. Uh, Midnight, you got a big block of text for your next one. So do it. Hello, Apple Cider and Chef Sandy, and especially great big hello to the guest of the week. It doesn't say that. It says hello, but uh, there you go. I'm reading it. I have the power. Um, it says, Ash Arrowwood here. First, I must thank you guys for doing such a wonderful podcast each week. It is one of the things I look forward to since it is a way for me to have an outlook for all the pony. I have never really listened to many podcasts before, but you guys conduct the show very well and make it a very fun thing to listen to. And I love that you guys are always introducing me to new things within the fandom. Now, to share some things with you all, in episode 12, Inky Spots mentioned Anime Amy and her awesome ponies that she has made. And I have to share the things I was able to pick up from her as well. I had a little tip on what she would have before the con, since I am friends with her and her fiancé. So attached you will find pictures of the custom Luna and DJ Pwn3 I was able to snag from them, along with the Twilight Sparkle shot glass and the very important 20% drunker shot glass that Inky mentioned. And I have to say, the glasses look really cool, and so does the Luna. I mm-hmm. think the Luna toy we've seen in the stores so far is either the really kind of tiny baby G3.5 mod one, which looks kind of awful. Mm-hmm. I think there's one kind of mini pony, which is almost the right shape. Yeah, I, I've seen those, and I was kind of un- I was kind of rather whelmed. Um, though, looking at the uh, the mods here, I do like that scratch. Yeah. Yeah, that's and a, it's a pretty cool scratch. So there, there should totally be a legit scratch toy for season. We two. we would I love if Hasbro actually. We would love if if, uh, if Hasbro actually listened to our you know our weird demands. I I am going to be the pessimist and believe that they're still going to keep making pink Celestias until the show is over. Yeah, so. there was the podcast. Um, they have the My Little Pony convention thing every year and that was one of the questions asked um why is celestia pink and they said well quite simply focus group said girls like pink so it's pink you know what um, that's why they yeah. have pinky pie <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of rage there just let it flow through you yeah so amazing so yeah, but yeah, yeah. That that that's that's why Celestia is pink. Okay, so um, but the- there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and it's not a train coming the other way. Oh they God! They are making brony-centric toys, apparently. Well, I'll see. So we'll it. Have I'll to see what that means. But I'll see it when cool. I. I'll believe it when I see it. I can't see it if I believe it. Wait, huh. that sounds like a if you're searching for it, it's on EQD. I'll add the link in later. Okay, well, go ahead and can finish up the email because there's I'll more. There's the email. more yeah, words. She said, "I also had her make up me a." Lunar vinyl sticker to plaster onto the side of my computer. The last thing I'll be receiving from her will be a custom Ash Arrowwood G4 pony, which I've attached a picture of a bag I had made up to have out on at the con. I found it funny that Inky brought up Amy's stuff since I had the plan on sending out an email informing you about her and her amazing things. <laughs> well, guys, keep up the amazing work and bringing me something great to listen to each week. Your faithful listener, Ash Arrowwood. So very and the pictures of the stickers look pretty cool. Yep, and the uh, Luna there. I am so jelly. Cutie marks, ahoy! There's some I Celestia there. Uh, the uh, the dash one on the left. I have one of those. The dash, dash uh, glass. <laughs> Excuse me. Come on, get it out, Chef! Don't you let that <laughs> sickness get you. Oh. Ah, so many hours of podcast kills my co-host. 
All right. Game over, man. Game over. Well, let's move this forward. Uh, the next one we got. Hello, everyone. Ooh. Why, thank you. Uh, I wanted to say that I have been enjoying your show a lot. I get into it very, relatively late, so I have had your back catalog playing in the background whenever I have my computer. Now that I have finally caught up to the current show, it's a little weird to not have conversations about ponies to listen to. My IRL <laughs> pony, recently I broke my phone in half and didn't want to buy a new one, so I put my SIM card in one of my sister's old phones. Had some problems, but the biggest thing for me was that it was light blue and it was kind of weird walking around with such a girly phone. I thought to myself, it does everything I want. I don't want to have to spend money. I just wish it was cooler. 20% cooler. It was then that I knew what I needed to do. And after two hours of making stencils, mixing paints, and painstakingly putting the paint on, this was the result. I was quite happy with it considering how inartistic I am. Keep up the good work. Blue sky. Mandatory PS. Fluttershy is my favorite. But in true Fluttershy spirit, I'm rather soft in my convention. I can see how about every character can be some pony's favorite. And uh, here we go, a little picture of High Bronyville, a blue phone with a rainbow, rainbow dash, dash cutie, cutie mark. mark on it. Best pony cutie mark. Oh. <laughs> I disagree. Uh. Well, I will it's... respect your opinion. <laughs> You dag over the mic stand. I'm Flick not. the desk. I'm, Out the door. Uh, you know what? I'm. Uh, you're my intern. The show. You do that for me, MS. All right. I'll. I'll, I'll do it with some decorum because I'm British. Okay. All right. All right. Which. Which will unfortunately not result in much sound as I quietly march out, mumbling under my breath. Good. Good job Stiff there. All right. Hip, good, hip. good job. Cheerio. All right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the Brits always classy everything up. Even their riots are classy. Wait, not usually. No. But, um, tish. All right. <laughs> Let's move this forward. Uh, there you go, chef. <clears throat> now that I'm back from the dead. Hey, AC and chef. In episode 12, Electric Zone expressed an interest in stealth brony gear that had references bronies would get but would go over the heads of normal folk. I was listening to this to the pot podcast at work, and the first thing he did when I got home was whip up the following. And he includes a link, and it is a bumper sticker that says my other car is 20% cooler. Mm -hmm. It has Dash's cutie mark. Sure does. Then, of course, people are like, your car is a Pegasus. Okay. Mm -hmm. The third thing, I thought I'd yammer on a little bit about flip the brony switch in my head to the on position. Ironically, it was another podcast. If you're a fan of Tokusatsu, i.e. Japanese live-action superhero programs, a.k.a. Power Rangers, one of the best podcasts about the subject is a show called Henshin Justice Unlimited. One of the regular features on the show is called What Are You Geeking Out Over? One episode, they were all talking about this show called, you guessed it, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. These guys are notoriously hard on the shows they watch, and to hear these hot-blooded, manly men squeeing about a cartoon targeted at preteen girls meant, at least to my mind, that it has to be doing something right. I paid a visit to YouTube, and by the time Fluttershy reduced a dragon to tears in episode 7, all hope was lost. Keep up the good work. Mike from Meredison. Meredison. Yes. That's two in a uh, row with the uh, with stuff that has dash cutie marks. Why is she so popular? I just don't get it. Because <laughs> she is best pony. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm going to have to move dash at least one spot up. She is now claiming spot five. Okay, so she's spot nice. five out of six main cast. Then who's number six? I have to keep that a secret so that no <laughs> pony gets mad at me. Because obviously some pony will get mad. Instead of just me Instead getting of mad just because you. Dash is sixth. Yeah, just you and all of your adoring Chef Sandy fans. I know, right? Yeah, you, you and your little subterfuge, your 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 republic of Chef Sandiness. Yes. Yep. Uh, but very cool. Uh, bumper stickers, especially hidden ones. Um, I actually like the uh, the big magnet bumper stickers. I kind of want to get one that has Luna's mark and then stick it on the side of my car and go, Not my moon! You know. <laughs> but that's me being silly. Ah, uh, yep. 
That looks cool, man. Very cool. So thank you very much, Blue Sky, for that one. Um, even though you do like Fluttershy. So, you know, that's okay. You can like what you want. Ah, uh, moving onward. Um, hey there, Mr. Shadow. Go ahead and do the next one. My dear Bronyville crew, greetings from sunny Iraq. Sunny with a chance of mortars, I guess. Aha. Even in this land of Celestia's wrathful sun, averaging in the high 120s lately, there is a chance now and then to hop online and download your latest show. So many thanks for a great way to stay connected to other pony fans. You strive to keep the show fun and professional. I really respect and appreciate that. Having such a solid foundation will no doubt encourage guests of the highest caliber to keep coming on, like me. Ha <laughs> ha. A question for you this week. Have you settled on a favorite nickname for Celestia? I've rather fallen in love with Luna calling her Tia, but that's probably because of those heart-melding egophiliac comics. Selly is okay, but Tia has just the right mix of cuteness and classiness for me. And a fun factoid, Friendship is Magic first aired on 10, 10, 10. That's all I have for a quick note. Thanks again for all your work. I owe you guys a beer and a bro who warmest and how regards. Sergeant Dave. And that's the guy with the really rockin' Fluttershy shirt. That yeah, if saw. I remember correctly. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that was an awesome shirt. And P.S. This is the important bit. Meme, AC. Pronounced meme. You're killing me, he says. Meme. It's meme. not meme. Meme. Meme is what I will do when you don't pronounce it meme. <laughs> oh. Oh, my rage. No, it is meme. See, oh. yeah. He, he doesn't get how bad he is when he says that. Meme. You are terrible, AC. You're I don't terrible. care. Mame. How, does that drive you crazy there, Sergeant Dave? Mame. These are all well, mames. He's got the mortars. Watch yeah, out. Oh, good God. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so, meme, I mean, meme, personally, meme, meme. favorite nickname for Celestia, I like Selly. It seems like a very cute kid sister nickname that would, like, slightly annoy Celestia. But it'd be very something very much that Luna would say, I would think. I've been using Selly most of the time when I've used it, which is not very often. Um the hard one for me is Luna. I mean, how do you shorten Luna? I've I've heard it shortened to Lulu, which is just as long as Luna and sounds ridiculous. Well, I mean Lulu could be like another like a kid sibling name. But I uh here here's a suggestion. Let me move the mic. L. No no no, you brought it up. Do it. Could just be Lou. So Lou, Lou for Luna, or L. L. So make it as short as possible. Just Sub L. L. Hey, no. Moon Lady. <laughs> just like that's, that's that's a little longer and doesn't well, make. You much could sense always of... uh, be like, this is going to be hilarious to some people, and my sister doesn't listen to this show, so that's okay too. Back when she was younger, she had a bunch of the G one ponies, and she didn't know their names because she was obviously. She was within the target demographic of the original series, and she just referred to them as Mark Butt. So Luna would be Moon Butt, Moon Butt, Sun Butt, <laughs> Lightning Bolt Butt, Moon Butt. She had a she had a Firefly plush, and she was just Lightning Butt, Lightning Butt. <laughs> that's awesome. That's great. Aww, that's so she, she still has that plush, by the way. Um, she's had it for probably over twenty years now. All right, on this one, I'm going to be the disagreeer. I like Tia. There, how you like that? I actually, that's like okay. You're totally entitled to be wrong. Oh, I like Tia. It's shorter. It, uh, I don't know. It sounds nice. Tia. I don't know if they. I, I don't think anybody yeah, shortens. Tia is in the comics. Oh, they do. Okay. Egophiliac has done some adorable comics, and his Ninja Wuna. Oh my God. Oh, Ninja Wuna. That is. That is weapons grade cute. That is, mm. and the uh, the solid snake Wuna when she has a little, she's in the box, but she has a little hole for the horn. Mm -hmm. like, uh, oh yeah, I remember I that. I've seen that one. It is it is adorable. Go go find it. It's, it's popped up on EQD a few times. Well, it's just on like Egophilix thing. Yeah, I guess you could find it there too. That would be a little bit more direct. Browse this gallery. It's on the first page. Okay. Uh, well, let's move onward. Uh, this one, uh-oh, hey, uh, hey, MS, you didn't give me a name here. I'm going to be angry, Fish. Um, but The name's at the bottom. It is? Oh, okay. It should be. 
Yeah, well, that's the name. Okay, it's gotcha. very short. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, do this. First off, I love the podcast. You guys do a great job. It's good to hear that I'm not the only fan of MLP that is male and above the age of eight. I have a question I hope you two can help cover for me. As said, I'm a fan of the show and watch the episodes repeatedly while eagerly awaiting season two. My wife, on the other hand, continually claims that she is not a fan. However, she has shown the following behavior. One, she will laugh out loud at scenes from the episodes while I am watching them. Two, she has an outline for an MLP fan fiction that is a crossover of the 1980s Queen Rock Opera Flash Gordon entitled, of course, Dash Gordon. Dash. Ah! Uh, is that uh, Finally, yes. uh, at your country fair while riding the tilt a whirl instead of screaming at the scary parts of the ride, she surprised me by shouting in a high pitched impression of Pinkie Pie, Twitchy Twitch, Twitchy Twitch. <laughs> so, in your opinion, how can I now say to her, Welcome to the herd? Thanks, Todd. Yeah, you can definitely say that. Lady, you gone full derp. Yeah. She, she is, welcome to the herd, yeah. She's gone full pony. Yeah, yeah all you got to do at this point is you, you just got to sneak it in of just like, figuring out her OC now of just like, so if you had to ever be like, if you I don't know, if you ever had to choose, would you be an Earth, a Uni, or a Peggy, all right? What color, all right? And your mark, all right, ha, 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 gotcha. And then you go into the uh, pony OC creator on DeviantArt and make it. And then she is pony. Yeah, but and then then there's no turning back. It's you know, it's all down. She pony now. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, Next thing you know, you've ponyfied the entire desktop of your laptop, and yeah. it plays My Little Pony theme tune when you turn it on, like mine does. And then you have little desktop ponies all just popping up and saying hi. Yeah, I've got seventy five of them. <laughs> Guilty. Wow. Okay. Um, that's pretty. Yeah, I think she's already converted. She's just trying to keep it under control. You can obviously expedite this by making her OC <coughs> if she doesn't already have one. So, yep. Okay. Uh, next up, hey, uh, hey, chef, you're gonna have to wrap. It looks like. No, I'm not. It's your turn. Oh, it is my turn. I thought it I... is your turn. This is your problem oh, now, man. sir. I thought I. I thought um, it... It's sweet revenge because look what it's about. Yeah. It's no, I about... swear. I just read the last one. Nope. <sighs> You're doing this to me, and I know it. You're just you're I taking have a huge smile on my face. You're, ta you're taking advantage of my bad memory. Okay. Just so everyone knows, we'll be looking for a new position for co-host on the show soon. All right. Um. So first off, thanks so much for reading my poem on your show. I told all of my friends and posted it. Uh, about it on my blog and on my journal on DeviantArt. Anyway, I was listening about how you guys got an email asking why you guys had so little love for Dash. Well, this inspired me to write a rap about Rainbow Dash because while I don't think she's as cool as Twilight, what? Dash apparently thinks she is. <clears throat> so... I hate you so much. I'm Jeff. sorry. My <laughs> rhymes are just not fly enough for this. Oh, man. Okay. All right. So here it is. Dash just is read it like, uh, you know, William Shatner. <laughs> you need to get somebody to do a beatbox to it oh, later. Man. This is going to be up on YouTube, I'm sure. All right. Then you guys got to be quiet because so, so that somebody could actually layer uh, some lyrics to it. Because if, I, if I'm going to do this, you know what? I'm going to commit. Dash is a pimp by Jacob Ellinger. Uh, I do. Do we want to put? Oh, somebody else put that. Um, so Dash is a pimp. They call me Dash. I'm not a cold mare. I just like to wear my ass. You just don't stare. It's hard. You think I'm playing. Boy, this is styling. Because I'm fast bullying, high rolling pony pimp. And you ain't nothing, son, but a no flying wannabe shrimp. Huh. Think I'm all talk. I'll show you, son, what's up. Take a free ride to Brony Town and see what I'm talking about. I've got bros on the street, bros in the hall, got bros in the sky, got max sized balls. You say really? that ain't nothing. Well, I'm going to tell you something. A rainbow biatch in your face. I got skills to spare, so take your place. 
ain't talking about second, ain't talking about third, talking back of the line, son, because you just got served. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Rizzle. That was awesome. Oh. So Rizzle, my shizzle, but bizzle. And see, this, I, you know, I saw that email and I'm like, man, I'm so glad that Ace is going to have to read that one. <laughs> I I do not rhyme. I do not rap. My flow is not strong. Like I had any either. Um, I'm sure somebody can auto-tune it and make something useful of it. I don't know. It's going to be awesome when uh, it's auto-tuned. We'll find out. We'll see. I don't know. But uh, if it becomes any good, we'll see. Just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All, all right. right. Now, sure. see, this one will be fun because it is written in... Apple Family Dialect. Huh? And I will do my best to read it as such. All right. Here goes nothing. I just want to start off and say I love your podcast a lot, and I listen to it all the time. Great work, guys. I'll also apologize. This is a long email. My sis says I tend to get chatty sometimes. First off, I wanted to ask you guys how you got your cutie marks and such. And maybe I can try those ways to get mine, too. Also, if you know any ways to get mine, that'd be mighty helpful, too. Second, I want to tell a story about the other day. I was out at the local mall to pick up myself a new headset from GameStop. Well... I had gotten there a might bit early, and all the stores were still a bit closed, including GameStop, so I decided to sit on the bench in front of the place. After a half hour or so, the store starts to wake up, and employees is messing around behind the gates, so I walk up and ask her what time the gates come up. She told me it wouldn't be open for another 30 minutes, and then her eyes went to the rainbow dash pen I had on the collar of my jacket. She then said if I could find what I want in 10 seconds flat, she'd ring me up before they open. Well, I pick out my headset, bring it to her, and she walks over and finds me a better one, saying it was 20% cooler. She proceeds to ring me up and even throws in a little discount, too. As I thanked her, she tells me not to tell a soul and made a Pinkie Pie swear on the spot. I turn to leave, and all I hear is, forever. As she closes the gate back up, let me tell you, I left that mall a happy filly. Thirdly, I don't think you talk about the cutie mark crusaders and myself enough on your podcast, and I think you really should. Oh, I almost forgot. I was wondering if you please read this last part as I'm trying to get my cutie mark in recruitment. I belong to a pony clan over on the MMO World of Tanks, and we's itching for new members, especially our EU sister clan. And we need people to swell our ranks and set our place in the clan wars map. The only requirement we have is that you get at least hooked to the game before joining, as they recently wrote up a list of people we needed to we needed to cut due to inactivity. Y'all can find the North American clan here. Link. And the European clan here. Link. When you apply for clan, just mention Apple Bloom sent you. Again, love the show and best wishes for many future episodes, Apple Bloom. P.S. I borrowed Sweetie Belle's crayons and drew y'all a picture. I hope y'all like it. P.P.S. I also fed one of them to Winona. Don't tell anybody, please. And there is an absolutely adorable drawn by me apple bloom picture of apple cider and Chef Sandy. I love this email so much. It is adorable. See, you know, we've gotten fan art, AC. Why is it not on the website? Uh, because we are currently battling issues of the website not actually allowing me to thumbnail things properly. So anytime I post a picture up, it is the full-sized BAM image, uh, and I have to shrink it down. It's just, it's just, some, e- it's just some website gaffes right now. Uh, we, we're trying to work through it and fix it up, but uh, we're, we're, we're working on it. We're trying. At least, because this is too adorable to just stick on an email. I know we're, uh, we'll we'll get that fixed up. Um, okay, so let, let's we probably should go from bottom to the top. Um, let's see, uh, World of Tanks, cool. Uh, the Cutie Mark Crusaders. I'll I'll go ahead and we'll talk about that. I you know starting off, I was a little bit lukewarm to them, and by the end of the season, I liked them. I really liked them. Um. I have to say that, you know, it was for, for first like Apple Bloom's cool, Sweetie Belle's kind of cool, but I don't know why. I just kind of decided, you know what? I'm liking Scootaloo. There. I like that. 
See, I I was, again, I think like most people, fairly lukewarm to the idea of, oh God, there's little sister ponies. What is this? Well, they actually made them their own characters in a way. You know, Apple Bloom is a different character than Applejack. You know, Sweetie Belle, despite not being the brightest of ponies, which I think has been a bit exaggerated by the fans uh, over the course of the break. Uh, I mean, it's Scootaloo with her, you know, seeming inability to fly, you know, has given a lot of fanon. Mm-hmm. Now, they made them their own characters, so they're not just, you know, crappy clones of a other pony or their sibling. So, I mean, I think that, uh, I mean, Scoots is my favorite of the three, but I mean, they all three are, you know, adorable in their own way. Mm hmm. Yeah, I have to. What, what about you, uh, Midnight? How do you feel about them? Um, well, I was kind of like everybody else. I liked Apple Bloom on her own. Um, the actual Call of the Cutie episode where she's trying to find, first of all, just herself, that's. That was her being adorable the whole way through. Um, then later on, the three of them together were kind of a bit mashed into one ball of pony, which was a bit too much. But I have to say that the 80s hairband remix episode, um, that was brilliant. I, I, I like that one from the beginning. There's a lot of people that didn't, but just the culmination of the whole episode where they do the song so badly everything explodes and they completely miss the point of the entire idea which was to work out who you are the the whole shunting to the side of the moral and saying yeah we're just going to we're going to be kids and ignore that that was brilliant from an episode point and i actually just love the way the characters did that um they are all adorable as the cmc i think scoodaloo probably is the cutest on their own it has to be apple bloom mhm yeah, well, I mean, Apple Bloom certainly has guts. I mean, she went into the Everfree Forest on her own. No, I and didn't meet the hor and uh, didn't meet the horrible fate that every pony seems to meet if they go into the Everfree and all the fanfic. Yeah, yeah, she does have that crazy game as well. It's just like I'm in the Everfree Forest. Oh God! Oh God! That game. Yeah, story of the blanks. Yeah, theme some good stuff. Yeah, that's. I want them to continue that game. That's kind of scary. It's really good. <laughs> I, I, I love s- the retro. I sicked it on uh, on um on uh, Sleepy Pie over here. Just it is your name, at least during the daytime when you're sleepy. Uh, <laughs> you don't make your claim when you say I'm not sleepy. Um. But uh, yeah, I think it, I think it was kind of interesting and good. Uh, and Apple Bloom is just pretty much just just adorable as is. So yeah, it's I, I think the CMCs are great. Now <clears throat> to move this up to uh, to the other story of we need to do this in character. Need to focus. All right. So how did Apple Cider get his cutie mark? <clears throat> well, obviously, this is going to require a little bit of in character time. So, let's hit the chimes, and let's go. Well, how'd I get my cutie mark? Uh, well, uh, suppose, and, uh, so I was working over with my family, doing the whole cider, and, uh, and you know, I, I was tasked up with doing the, the winter cider for the day, uh, you know, just fixing it up and everything. Uh, and uh, around about, I decided to mix a few other things in, some clothes, a little bit of uh, cinnamon, you know, trying out some new new things. And uh, I just up and went, you know, we ran out of all the necessary goodens. I couldn't find them. They weren't nowhere. So I just uh, did what any pony did, ran right about town, got all the pieces, I got all the fashion together. But I couldn't just get the, all the ingredients I needed that was just plum not there. So what I decided to do was I was going to mix it together, figure out something else, my own little combination, my own little thing. You know, maybe it'll be good. I don't know. So I got uh, some of the other fixings. I frankly don't really even recall what all I put it in there. I was putting berries and twigs and little bits of this and that, and I don't know. Well, we stilled it up, poured it, and that stuff plum came right off the shelf, lickety split. It was incredible. And round about that time, right there on the flank, how it happened. How do you like that apple? 
<clears throat> well, I see that certainly is uh, adventures in making hooch. Good job. I hope Brad I could. In all, uh, I'll tell you what. Oh, well, you, you shut yourself over there, you rap scallion. Chef's trying to tell himself some story. <laughs> rap stallion? Yep. That, that's pretty good. Darn tootin'. <laughs> hey, yeah. Woo. All right. Let's do this. Well, let's see. I wasn't too uh, too very old when I figured out my special talent. My family was farmers. And uh, I grew up in the arid lands out west. was was son of a settler ponies. And all up on the farmland, we had these cactus growing. And nobody wanted to give them a try. They, they just wanted to get rid of them, throw them away, uh, toss them out. Everybody claimed they were too hard, too much effort to eat. So just get rid of them and just grow apples like every pony else. And I was like, no, that's so good. I'm going to give it a shot. And uh, that's also where I earned my nickname, Needle Nose. Needle Nose. Kept sticking my face in those cactus trying to figure out a way to... Get them out and ended up with more than my share of <laughs> needles in the nose. But I decided to give it a shot, figured out a way to cook them up, and lo and behold, people liked them. And then, you know, I made, they had some fruits, made some ice cream out of that, and, well, looks like my town found the new supply of food. I got my cutie mark. It's a little cactus with a chef's hat on it. And now I'm here in Ponyville sharing my culinary expertise with the rest of the city. And you sure can. You can come right on down to Chef Sandy and Apple Cider's Foodery and Eatery at any time located near the uh, Sweet Apple Acres. You can get yourself a nice uh, nice little salad going. Get yourself some ciders. Great thing for a summer day, winter day, any day. Just come on down and we will uh, fix you up with some food, fill your belly, and you'll be set. There you go. <laughs> There's the stories for you, or at least a little bit. That was. That I hope was, your body was ready. That was that was interesting as all get. All right, my body was not ready. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that came off. I hope that worked well. That was interesting. People are gonna think we're weird. I know. Oh that, no, that's incredible. Hey. Yep. Uh, so who's? Ne- I guess that's uh, midnight. Can uh, start us off with all these fanfic suggestions. So we've got a metric ton of them. Uh, so let's do this. Midnight. What we got? We have quite a few of them for you today, actually. Let me see. Um... Midnight is half asleep at his keyboard. <laughs> Let me remove this key. For I have the letter K on my cheek. Let me wake up and actually look. It, it is actually very late where he is. So, yeah, it's actually almost four in the morning. Yep. But we my can't. dedication. Oh, yeah. Stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fans pick suggestions. <laughs> He's <laughs> adding <laughs> Z's to this. <laughs> Head on keyboard. Yep. So, uh, all right, go ahead and hit the hit the next one there. Um, well, midnight. the next one is from Sergeant Grubb. Now, I'm pretty sure this has been listed before. Um, I think it's actually a six-star fic as well. It says, I'd like to start by saying, as the title suggests, that I love the show you guys do. It's incredibly fun to listen to, and always I find myself awaiting the next episode. That said, I remember he- hearing your last guest, Vanilla Bean, was looking for some episode fix. I assume it means a fan fiction form of an episode in written form. I read an amazing piece of fan fiction a while ago, and I figured I'd give you a link for it. And it's actually a link to I Ain't Got No Accent, <laughs> which is AJ and Rarity. It's where Rarity receives an order for outfits for an agricultural expo. Um, but she doesn't know what farmers wear, so of course she seeks Applejack's help. And while trying on the outfits, Applejack's main Hatton voice from when she's a filly slips out, and Rarity just insists that she uses it. And um, it is a very fun fic, that one. Uh, in closing, says Sergeant Grubb, thanks for the awesome show. I look forward to the next episode. Your resident Arizona brony, Sergeant Grubb. P.S. Applejack is best pony. Applejack is a good pony. I like Applejack. I wish she, I wish she got, Yep, I wish Applejack gets more coverage. I hope in season two she's treated better. She does need the Applejack 
heroic episode, doesn't she? She she needs she needs an apple bucket of her own. You know, just right in the seat of her pants to make her, you know, seem awesome, just like they did to Rarity twice last season. So, yeah, very cool. I actually think we covered that one before, but, uh, you know, anything Applejack related? I want to like you, Applejack. I want you to be number one. Give me something. Yeah. She was so big for G1, I think. Mm hmm. So she, she does deserve some more screen time. Yep. All right, let's hit the next one. This one by Professor Shrinky Fraud, um, I believe. That's so far away. Uh, hey there all. Wanted to say that I'm loving the show and thought I'd mention a fanfic that y'all might appreciate to channel Applejack for a moment there. Or, or, <laughs> y'all. Or to channel us a moment ago. Um, five minutes. Mostly throwing this one your way because it wouldn't exist twice over if not for Chef Sandy. The musical sex selection was one I was introduced to by another of his side projects, and if it weren't for both of you guys, I don't know if it'd necessarily have gotten into the ponies at all. Maybe idly curious about it, but certainly don't know if I'd have ended up watching the shows. Until next time, and Professor Shrinky Fraud. Um, so there you go, five minutes. Um, all made it is because certainly very random. Mm-hmm. All made because all came to existence because of our own Chef Sandy, the Rainbow Dash lover himself. Yes. <laughs> and, Onward yep. to victory. So next up. Ah, well, <laughs> I think Midnight will know what story this one's talking about. Uh, oh, Twin Buster. From Twin Buster, yes. He says, I just got to say, I love the podcast. It's one of the many things tidying me over until season two comes out, which is in about 20 days. Whee! Sorry, fan girl there. Hearing about others putting so much effort into something they love has given me a bit of clarity as to what I want to do with my life. MLP has really done a lot for me. As for recommending fanfics, I'd have to agree with Past Sins, but also A Precious Rainbow and Star. <coughs> if any punny is low... Keen for a sad fic that doesn't end with every pony dead or previously deceased, somewhere only we know is a gem. I actually have to say that is quite grim happy. It's a strange one, that one. Hmm. Well, to end this email, I was wondering if either of you had heard of a fic. I can't remember the name for the life of me, but Twilight, the princesses Celestia and Luna, and Spike took a dimensional ship to the Dragon Realm. Have you guys heard of a fic like that? It's going to bug me all week. Thanks. Continue doing what you do, Twin Buster. Well, let me see. I believe there was a fic like that, that some pony named Midnight Shadow wrote. Oh, no. It is called Calling the Shots Part 3. It's up on EQD. Happy, yeah. happy grin from me. And there you go. Yeah, I'm that... actually still writing Part 4. It's coming. But Part oh. 3 is there. And that's oh. the one. That one was based on a trip across the big pond that I took, and it's me venting my frustrations upon all of the TSA and the <laughs> flight attendants and airports in general. And it's um, reasonably funny, let's say. But then you got to see I... me, which made it up for it. Ha-ha! I did, ha uh -huh. So That was the highlight of the whole trip. <laughs> It's like I get to go all across the pond and see stuff, and then I get to see this weirdo for a whole 45 minutes. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah, the highlight of your trip was me. I think we're all sorry. I'm glad I could bring the thunder for 45 minutes. It was pure awesome. Yep. Concentrated awesome. Yep, so uh, very cool. Uh, let's see, go back up. Um, you know, somewhere only we know. So you say it's like a happy grim? Like, how does that work? <laughs> Well, what it is, it's, I believe it's Rainbow Dash, and it's, it switches styles on you, you know, partway through and then switches back. What it is, is, is Rainbow Dash is reminiscing on, um, her life, and first of all, she's this old, sad, decrepit pony on her last legs, wondering where all of her friends have gone, and then all of a sudden she starts daydreaming, looking at the sky, and she's Rainbow Dash, and her friend Twilight Sparkle's there, and she's, She's got wings and she can fly, and then she lands again, and suddenly she's sick and tired and cold again, and she's being made to pull this um, carriage and things, and uh, it's really sad and grim again. And then all of a sudden she starts daydreaming again. Once once her job's over, she daydreams about the sky again, and then she's Rainbow Dash again. It's quite 
it's got mood whiplash. It's really well done. It, it's strange when you start reading it, but when you realize what's happening, it's, it really hits you. That's true. That's, <laughs> that does seem like mood whiplash very much of just like, oh, that's very nice. Oh, <laughs> we're back in the real, ah, oh, it's like, what, oh, what, the real world sucks. Yeah. What was the, what was that movie where it was all like ha- half possibly the girl imagining that she was living in this like fantasy world? Meanwhile, on the other hand, they had like the Spanish revolution going on around her. Uh, Hans Labyrinth. Hans Labyrinth. There you go. And, yeah, and yeah. It's very, very much like that. Very much like that. It's quite short. You can read it pretty quick, um, and it's pretty good. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I so every once in a while I do like a sad fic just to you know clear out the senses. Um, though I do have the uh, the misgivings that it seems like half of them always end with, and so they went and got and saw their friends, and their friends were dead, and it was sad, and then they died, you know. And the trees were dead, <laughs> and the, <laughs> the pants. pants, uh, and the pants were lying and bloody on the. Okay, so anyways, next email. Yep. You, let's see. Is it my? I think it was. Sh- I, I think we it was weirdly. my turn, but. Oh, okay. Midnight just had to pimp his own story. So. All right, so oh. you got to make up for it now. Do it, Chef. Yes. Of course, I will be mentioning Midnight again. So a number of ponies have suggested some of the Happy Luna fix. The winners. Tonight I Shall Be Laughter. Giggling Moon, which I really liked. Eso si que es. <sighs> really? And The Sock Swap. <laughs> And all of these are linked to off the Midnight Shadows Happy Luna fan fiction. You know, I think I think Midnight started putting in a whole bunch of his stuff. Like, yeah, these were totally emails. Midnight Shadow, Midnight Shadow, <laughs> Midnight Shadow. No, they actually really were. Ah, uh, but yeah, they they were they were legitimate emails. Okay. But you were talking about we have had a sudden influx of grim, dark, and sad, and um. That's one of the reasons why we actually had the Happy Luna fanfic challenge. We said, okay, look, guys, how about making Luna happy for a while so I don't have to sit on the moon in my very sad little Luna igloo and, and sulk there before she lets me back to Equestria Daily again? It's very sad because last time she sent me there using the cannon on the roof, which we use for the fan fanfiction. That hurts. Yeah. And, and so, my- yes, we had this challenge created. And... We got some really good stories out of it. I'm shocked. I think uh, that if not all four, then at least three of the four winners there actually hit six stars. Hmm. And they are worth it. Very cool. Yeah. Which I do wish to mention, it wasn't Luna on the Moon. It was not, Why does everybody have, like, sad Luna on the Moon when in, in reality it should be a lot of angry nightmare Moon on the Moon going, Grrr! Yeah, that is true. It, I mean, it wasn't, it, it should be, everybody's just doing these, oh, I want to go back, but in real, you know, reality, it's just Nightmare Moon just trying to, try, should should have just written on the moon, I hate, so, damn it, I ran out of room. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the, if, you, if you haven't seen those Lonely Astronaut videos, oh, I have. Uh, those are pretty funny. Because <laughs> I'm on the moon! <laughs> Yeah, those those are those are some pretty pretty good uh, hilarious little videos. Uh okay, uh, let's move on. I think I'll get the next two because the uh, next one is a little short. Oh wow, and we're gonna we're gonna uh, that will finish up up for uh, fanfic. So first one, Cloud Dreamer recommends having a ball, uh, which, which is adorable. Which, as I recall, is a quite adorable rarity fic. If I'm right, <laughs> yes. Uh, where there is a it is made by our good friend Serial Velocity. Who wants to be on the show? And I will totally let him. Uh, where uh, sometimes getting your cutie mark doesn't mean you have all the answers, and it's rarity with a ball, and is supposedly just loved by all. Uh, moving on. Hello, Apple Cider and Chef Sandy. Love the show. Uh, so you say you want a good fanfic? Well, here's some amazing suggestions. Number one, black and white. Number two, <laughs> Twilight Sky over Canterlot. It seems both of these stories have been hailed as a best one-shot MLP fix ever. I completely agree. They both brought tears to my eyes, and I'm surprisingly not sad fix. Okay, maybe the first one. But the second one is a feel-good, really good. 
Black and White by Milanos. Milanos. is about Octavia and Lyra. Kind of. I'll just leave it at that. Twilight over Canterlot by Foxy or Foxy or Twilight Flopple. Uh, this one is really well written. Written. I suggest curling up with one cozy, leisurely evening with your beverage of choice and enjoying the excursion to Canterlot by, with Twilight. Cesar thirty seven. P.S. Twilight and Dash are both best pony. Compromise. That's a silly way of spelling Bumblebee. Wait, what? Hmm. <laughs> He's throwing I'm it. Confused. I'm very confused, but maybe maybe this it's is a Transformers. Yeah. Come on. We don't believe oh, we don't believe in the you. joke <laughs> over the head. God, get off of my show. Heresy, I know. Uh, it's rarity. So, um <laughs> but what is this? A, a, a compromise that Twilight and Dash can be best, best pony? I don't know. Can we can we truly bury this hatchet? Nah, it's too much. It's too much fun to keep poking that Dash isn't as good. Um, but uh, yeah, very cool. Uh, I like one shots because they kind of work as their own little stories, and you don't have to feel like you're you know investing into. Oh God, it's chapter twelve. Oh God, oh God, it's gonna keep going. Well, what's worse is when the story gets you know part way through and then stops stops updating. and they don't update yeah They're like no the story's not done i'm left which is why i don't like reading un- incomplete stories <laughs> i am left in limbo so uh yeah, yeah very- those those people who create novel <laughs> fix and then never finish them are jerks i know i hate every single one of them especially ones that show up on our show yeah <laughs> guilty as those child, yeah. jerks Total jerk, that guy, that Midnight Shadow writing uh, elements of Discord, plug, plug, plug. Yeah, and then, oh good, so you're going to plug something that you admit you aren't finishing. There you go. Oh, I'm going to finish it, I'm uh-huh. going to finish it. Yeah, that's what everybody who isn't going to finish their fic says. No, I've actually got the last part, actually, in progress as we speak. And you're just like, you're just like, alright, fine, one sentence, and then they hugged, there. Yeah, the <laughs> end. <laughs> Everything was resolved, they all hugged, over. Everybody goes, good. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> Worst ending ever, but okay, it's resolved. Uh, okay, so let's move on. So we actually have some suggestions from fans of One Cool Thing. So uh, we can go ahead and run through these real quick. Just uh, fan-related One Cool Things that they wanted to bring to us, uh, to our attention. Uh, who who was the last th- person that said stuff? I forget. Um, oh, that was me, so it should be Chef. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Me, you mean I get to talk? You get to talk now. Okay. So, the one cool thing. Dear Chef Sandy, Apple Cider, and guests. Oh, yeah. While watching the videos you guys linked into on episode 17, I stumbled upon a series of videos by a young woman named Ag- Agatamon. She's basically taken several popular scenes from My Little Pony, Friendship's Magic, and fan dubbed them into Japanese. From comments she left on her videos, she seems that she lived in Japan until she was five, then her family moved to the UK. So far, she's done The Elements of a Good Cheer, Pinky is Pie, Twilight is My Bestest Friend song, and Rarities, This is Whining, with more on the way. I don't know how enthusiastic you guys are about the moon speak, but I've been having a blast watching these things. At the very least, it's cool that she's distinct, doing distinct and appropriate voices for all the ponies by herself, which is no, which has a feat no matter what language it's in. Here's her channel, provided a link, and then the link to the individual videos. Please keep in mind that all these are marked as rough drafts, so sound effects are missing and the audio quality isn't super duper great. Love your show, please keep up the good work. Sincerely, Dream Buyer. P.S. Rarity Sama is the Segoyest Pony, Desu. P.P.S. I am not a weeaboo, really. <laughs> P.P.P.S. You're not making your case very well. <laughs> Desu. Uh, am I kawaii, ugu? Uh, flip. Done with this. <clears throat> uh, damn weeaboos. Shake so, my hoof. Uh, <laughs> I, I do have to friend. say that. you have to get her doing this. Okay, all right. Here <laughs> you, go, I mean, you wish you guys could hear her. Uh, yeah, she is just being ridiculous and way too anime anime. 
In any event, though, they are adorable sounding, and they get the this is whining essence down. Uh, that reminds me a bit of the Durango from the live action. Um, oh shoot, what was it? Do, 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 Not Gotcha Man. I don't know. There's this one really crazy live action Japanese film that I watched recently that reminds me of the character. And I can't remember what it is. Yatterman. Yatterman. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I love Yatterman. I don't know what that is. I'm just saying I love Yatterman. <laughs> I'll it's... pretend I know it to an agree. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, don't you love that midnight? Don't you love Yatterman? Yeah, I love the thing where he goes. And oh, stuff. dude, that's so cool. And that time where his fist came out. And they turn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If anybody has seen the live-action Yatterman movie, it's worth it, okay? I, I love wacky, weird Japanese cinema. So... We have a question from the crowd on if it is on Netflix. I do not think so. Ah, uh, then there's no reason to even try and watch it. You have to find it on YouTube. Oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, well. So, uh, yeah, the uh, the rarity whining bit, yeah, that, that that's the stereotypical, like, all right, well, you know, she did it high-pitched, but here's it being high-pitched. <laughs> like, oh, God. So high. It hurt. Oh, that episode, that cemented rarity is the best pony for me, so I, I, I'm going to have to watch this later, and I'm probably going to laugh. Yeah, so you, hard. So, uh, moving onward, let's see. Uh, tell you what, real quick, when you hit that one, midnight. Okie dokie, looky. It says, care to see a real sonic rainbow from an official NASA site? I get the APOD or astronomical picture of the day and found this as their pick for today, Wednesday, August 24th, 2011. If you can't get to this email today and don't see what I'm talking about, just look in their archive for the above date and you'll see what I mean. And, uh, I've seen the picture on EQD, I believe, and it looks so awesome. It's, it's actually a sonic green boom. Yep. Dash has visited us. Like, Aah! she, she came into orbit, went, hit, looked at, looked at what there was, uh, here for her to see, and then skipped right back out. <laughs> yeah. She was like, she nope. Was just, nope, I'm out. She was just like, wait, they shipped me with who? <laughs> <laughs> she shipped with every pony. Uh, hey, oh, wow, I've got it. Maybe believe that. I don't, I got to maybe oh, even a name my girlfriend. Wow, okay. Horse on a bad word. You, she, she, she has had too much pony, I guess. All right, I need to finish this up. So, uh, I have We've only one. been doing this for four hours four i hours. think we're all a little loopy just a little bit so let's finish this up so this was something that i'm sure that i know midnight lin linked me to and it's a very short email because this m email is just simply saying on the moon yes. yeah the uh, on the moon flash uh friendship is magic biatch um <laughs> you can find on deviant art uh as much as I'm just like, oh, I don't like it, there, I, I do end up now saying, Good, <laughs> but uh, would you like a banana? Do do you like bananas? We've lost Bronyville. He's too quiet. I'm too quiet? Unless he's moved back from the mic that we can hear. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can you not hear me? Or maybe yeah, you, you went all quiet. And you know what? It's, pr it's probably because I start, I yelled so loudly it changed my <laughs> mic. But did. yeah, the uh, the it, it now is the reason of why I'm just like, oh well, you know, um, you know, I, I can't do that for you. But uh, would you like a banana? Do you like bananas? No, you 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 don't like bananas. Is that you? No, you, you don't. No, no. Are you, so so you're telling me that you're you're my girlfriend who doesn't like bananas? Uh, so, so you would, you, you know what? Yeah, I know exactly where you can find no bananas. And what I can do is you can find none of those bananas on the moon! Yeah. Yep. Ow. Uh, I, <laughs> whatever. Oh, is going to have such fun with this. Yep, yep. Ah, oh, that kind of hurt. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you should you should at least see that flash once. It unfortunately implants itself in your head, kind of like the pink amina, you know. Uh, oh, it is it is yeah. so hilarious. I think I watched that thing like five times in a row. <laughs> the, the the first pony, 
it, his house is burnt down, and he's got a cardboard box with a cutie mark. I mean, it's just... Yeah. I, I actually like the second uh, one that's just the terrible scribble, just like, oh, no, I actually <laughs> want to talk to you about setting up like a new type of government because we, yeah. we don't entirely right. like what you're doing here, and it's... Uh, and like, uh -huh. presidents now, we don't uh, need princesses. Yeah, people will like, be, yeah. be elected and have, have, don't, don't have any of that. And it's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or the or the or the troll faces when Luna's there. <sighs> mm. Ooh. Yeah. So let's let let's let people watch the uh, Flash instead yeah. of enacting the entire thing. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's far more fun this way. So, uh, all uh, right. It is. It is. It is. It's bad radio. And since it's one one cool thing, and one cool thing always comes at the end of the show. Guess what? End of the email show. <laughs> we get to kick MS off of our show again. But he'll be back. Again. Yeah, he'll be back next week for more Pony. As we actually and have I will him. bring my outrageously bad accent. Yes, you'll bring your bad accents and you'll bring your friend Roy G. Biv, it sounds like. So we're going to have <laughs> the frigging writer roundtable while I sit here and go... So you write thick, right? That's cool. Okay. You write a story. So what's so, this story about? Some of your stories have bad things in them. That makes me feel weird. Um. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's let's run through this. So uh, as always, I want to thank uh, all you really really gracious fans. We didn't do iTunes and stuff because we literally just did that last show, which we recorded no more than two hours ago uh so you can totally go uh leave us uh, some review on itunes uh we will read them on the show and uh give you your props uh you can um what you should do is you should go over to <laughs> baroni show.com or send us an email at baroniville at gmail.com and every 10 episodes we do one of these big email shows so we can definitely catch up and start reading some of your stuff Ah, I want to thank our guest this week, uh, you know, even though he brought the silly way more than he should, and he'll be back next time. Uh, thank you, Midnight. Cool, blimey, Governor. <laughs> You're so British, it hurts me. Uh, I want to thank... Dean Crumpets. <laughs> and I uh, want, as always, thank uh, my co-host there, uh, Chef Sandy. Good job there. Well, you're mighty welcome. I'm glad we could do this. And uh, it's apple cider. I uh, want to say thank you all. Uh, this has been Bronyville episode 20. And uh, we'll go ahead and catch you next week with more pony. Uh, sleep well, ever pony. I tell you what. Adios. <laughs> you're all bye oatmeal. Bye uh, bye. You are all, all oatmeal. Thank <laughs> you.